Neil, good morning. And all our friends in India, good evening to all of you. At the outset, I, Dr. Sham Zawar, National Mentor for IVF Labs in India, appointed by the Department of Animal Husbandry and Daring Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring Government of India, on behalf of Bovine Embryo Transfer Group of India, welcome you all our is and our esteemed speaker from Brazil, Dr. Rodolfo Bonilla, for this webinar. I also have a privilege to welcome none other than our senior most reproductive biologist. I'm sure all of you are able to see him, Dr. M. L. Madan, who is who has been recently awarded the Padma Award, and we as a veterinarian of the whole country feel uh, proud of him. Uh, for the information of all the people who are attending, participants who are here, let me tell a few lines about Dr. Madan, who was, when he was at Director Research, NDRI Research Institute, National Dairy Research Institute at Karnal in Haryana. He was the first person under his guidance, the first IV of buffalo calf, not only of the India, but of the whole world was born in the year 1990. We feel very proud of you, sir, joining our uh, group as a member and further joining uh, for this uh, webinar. Uh, we have no words to express uh, a gratitude uh, towards you. Before we proceed further, I invite your kind attention for some of the important points. And that is, I request you all of you to keep your audio muted during the webinar while the talk is in progress. And when our guest speaker is uh, talking, you can, if you have any questions, you can use the chat box, which is there on your Zoom screen and post your questions. We will uh, live stream the webinar through my Facebook account so that participants can watch the same. And this is just for your information. At the end of the talk, I will request the speaker to answer your questions. So with this note now, let me introduce our speaker, Dr. Ronaldo Bonilla. Dr. Ronaldo, Dr. sorry, Dr. Rodolfo, is a doctor of veterinary medicine, a young veterinarian, just only 33 year old, specialized into bovine, production and reproduction. Since 2014, he is operating in many regions of Brazil, Latin America, USA, and Australia. Enable to format and execute projects specially directed to the needs of each customer. He has a huge experience in IVF, which will be relevant from the following figures. He has aspirated about 5,000 cows and done about 65,000 embryo transfers till now. And about 25,000 IVF pregnancies have been established and more than 20,000 IVF calves are born. In the breeding season recently of 21-22, he has transferred more than 14,000 embryos. When I was talking to him other day, he was busy in embryo transfer and he said, Sham, I have got to transfer today 250 embryos in next four hours. That sort of a capacity Dr. Rodolfo has got. Dr. Rodolfo is providing quality services in production and reproduction of beef and dairy cattle with special emphasis on planning livestock projects, animal nutrition assistance, fixed time artificial insemination program, IVF program, andrology services, semen collection and freezing, animal management, herd health, and then import and export of bovine genetics. With this introduction, I now request Dr. Rodolfo to start his uh, speech. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Rodolfo, please. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Shan, for the invitation. Uh, I'm starting uh, anticipating my apologize to you because uh, presentation, things like that are not my specialty. I am really a person, in, uh, of a field person working in yards, working with the farmers. Uh, and I'm here today to share you some of these experiences. And I hope 
you like this presentation. So let's start. Oh, good. Everybody seeing the presentation? Yeah. Uh, like Dr. Shen uh, introduces me, uh, I'm, I'm a technician working in this for 10, 12, 12 years today. And we do many projects here in Brazil, big projects, small projects. We can customize it for each customer and uh, try to give the best results for everyone. Uh, the subjects of this presentation will be, we will talk some about the brief production scenery in Brazil today. We will talk about dairy production scenery in Brazil today, just to context you, uh, the, 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 the size of the market that we are here and what we have to, to do to keep it uh, doing ser good services in this market and improving uh, quality to the products and the services for everybody involved. Then we will talk about IVF and ET, the technicians themselves. Uh, we will talk about the success of these IVF projects that we have here for many years. We'll talk about many tools that we have to do this success to happen, like frozen embryos, fresh embryos, the advantages of the technology, talking about every Everybody involved, the farmers, the lab owners, we challenges because it's a, a, a technician to, to have good results. Then we'll talk about some cases, success cases, and then we, we will have a conclusion. Just on that. So talk, talking about the beef production, just to, to inter introduce you to the scenery here in Brazil, according to the USDA, in 2022, the world beef cattle will, will be higher than 1 billion animals. And the most, play, the most important players in this market are India and Brazil, with 30% and about 25% of the herd. In despite of the size, Brazil have a lot to increase at, produc at productive levels. Here in Brazil, the best producers really have the, uh, the most efficient production in the world. But our average of productions in, in beef are, uh, really have to increase uh, many levels of, of uh, profitable of use of the, 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 the land. Uh, so we have much to, to, to be better. Uh, we will talk about hormonal protocols, just a, a simple, uh, a simple talk about hormone, hormonal protocols to synchronization, because probably you have people more able to, to talk about this in other, in other opportunities of this webinar. Uh, and why it's become the most important tool to enable technicians like AI and IVF. Uh, we, we will talk about uh, the genetic improvement. Why does the AI and IVF that in my conception here are uh, technicians to, to reproduce, to, to multiply the genetics and how does it mean, does it be, be, could be a, a technician to have genetic improvement? Uh, According to Asbia, that is the inter uh, <laughs> artificial insemination uh, association in Brazil, Brazil is the world, the world biggest market for FTA and IVF technologies. And according to the Brazilian government, about 400,000 embryos have been produced in Brazil in, 20, 000, in 2020 which represents about 60% of the world embryos production. So that's just to, to context to you, our scenery here that we work. Uh, talking about dairy production, uh, about the same scenery with a lot of increase in, this, uh, in these years, in this test, last 10 years, but we have so much to increase. Uh, in dairy production, we, we are more related talking about development than, than beef production. Brazil is the fifth largest country in, the, in dairy production, but just exports 1% of the total production. So we just produce to ourselves. In despite of the size, Brazil have a lot to increase at productive levels. This average, as, as I said, in, the, in beef production is, is really 
have much to increase. The, the top producers are really, really efficient with good uh, average of production, but the, the average really have to increase. Hormonal protocols, this, as, this, as in beef, uh, just viable. The, the technicians like AI and IVF, uh, using this technician with good donors, we have a, a genetic improvement. And according to the Brazilian government, in the past last 50 years, Brazilian dairy production increased seven times, from 5 billion to 35 billion liters a year. Uh, it's according it's related to better environmental and better genetics sure according to sbte that is the society of e e Trans embryo transfer in brazil in 2000 and, and 2019 the percentage of dairy embryos in brazil was about 60 percent of the total produced here so we have here in brazil a uh, market to ivf uh, the, the biggest market to IVF is dairy, not beef. Uh, I'm sorry for this table. Uh, it's in Portuguese, but it's important just to contest you the biggest country, uh, the biggest dairy country producers in the world. United States, India, China, Russia, and then Brazil. Uh, so let's start the presentation. Uh, we will talk about IVF and ET. What is this? What it can possibly us? We can, we can, we, using IVF, we can have more than one calf of cow year. Uh, talking physiologically, it will not be possible. So the best cows you have in production, in uh, adaptability, in many characters that you want to put in the herd, you will not have. Uh, very uh, most uh, too much descendants from this cow. With this technician, we can have many many descendants coming into the the, the herd. Uh, it will it, it's it's the, the steps to do this technician are the extract of the do, of the oocytes from the donor, and then the maturation, the fertilization and then the cultivation of the structures until they become viable embryos and then the ET that is the, the using the receipts. Uh, how do you do this? With the OPU uh, that's oven pickup guide for ultrasound, then we do the maturation normally in Brazil during the time that you extract the, the oocytes, uh, you, you are traveling to the lab uh, here, as you, as you have this situation too, we have a big country with many producers in different realities. So we, you, we use these distances and uh, try to, to have the, this time, uh, try to do this time be, uh, to, how can I say, we, you, we have to, use the distances, the times, the travelings as advantage to do this, this process work. So we use this traveling time to maturation. And then when the oocytes came to the lab, uh, you, the lab, persons in the lab do the IVF and then starting the cultivation. If we need, we can leave the labs uh, in the embryos in the four day of development and then pack the embryos in the, the farms to do the transfers. Uh, so we use the difficulties to help us in many schedule things, okay? This is a video uh, just to, to, to see the, the, the IVF in lab. The major oocytes being fertilized. Okay, just to, just to, to show you. Uh, let's talk about the projects. Uh, in, the prog in the projects, we have many variables that we can control and many variables that we can't control. Talking about donors, we have to choose the donors with much uh, careful to reproduce what really is important to, re to reproduce to each cow, to each herd. The donors have to be with the health in, in day, uh, with good health, in good body conditions, and we have to pay attention to the welfare of the donors 
uh, talking about stress, uh, thermic stress, environmental stress, and many other conditions. Talking about the semen, uh, the quality of the semen is really important to do all the process, to the whole process. Uh, we have here in Brazil many, many protocols to wash the semen and use in IVF, if, uh, avoiding contamination. And we have many batches of semen knowed as good batches to produce embryos. So we do, we run a lot of tests, a, a lot of tests to, to be knowing what semen, what batches of, of semen are good to do IVF. Talking about the receipts, again, we have to choose carefully. Um, we have to pay attention in this health. We have to pay attention in this body condition. Uh, talking about here of uh, nutrition facts. And that's, we have to talk to, to be, be careful with the protocols of synchronization uh, because it can change and have you better results in each case. Uh, in Brazil, we have uh, some people who works with natural astros. That is a difficult uh, technician to do, but uh, brings good results. And we have to, to think about welfare of the, the animals involved in the processes. Talking about the processes, we have the OPU, the oven pickup, the IVF, the ET, and we have many tools to do this work, like frozen embryos, fresh embryos, uh, labs movement. Uh, we can move the, some labs here uh, to, to, to uh, really, really do these projects, have good results for everybody. So, as I said to you, uh, presentation, technical things, uh, we, we use this in, on, the, on the dairy here, but uh, that's not my, I'm not an expert in this. So I'll try to, to talk to you about my reality, about the things that we do in field, to if there are many, many situations that you li live there too, you can probably extract something that could be helpful to you in the, in the, the situations that you have yet there. Uh, talking about the receipts, uh, we will, we will, we, I will show you the, for an example, I will talk about the ideal situation, what would we have to, to have the best results and something about the real situation that we have here in Brazil uh, in the in same situation. So let's see this video of these receipts. Uh, so this is a, a very good load here in Brazil. We, we, we consider it, it as, as the, the best that we can have. We're talking here about animals with an age, a property age, uh, about 20 months. Uh, the, comp the genetic composition in this case are half-blood Chateaulis and Nelori. Uh, we have here, the, we, we can use here the many, many types of genetic composition, but the half-blood Bos Taurus, Bos Indicus is what bring to us the best results because of the, the composition, because of the heterosis and many other factors. Uh, we talk here about animals with sexual maturity uh, and we talk here in this farm uh, of many animals, animals available to, to work. And this farm, for example, they have about 5,000 uh, receipts like these ones. In the real situation, uh, we will not find this every time. Many times we have lotus with uh, much different animals. Uh, old cows with hyphers, uh, with not mature hyphers, mature hyphers, uh, cows in bad condition of nutrition, and many things like this. Uh, low fertility cows many in brazil we have a, a question to to the, the cost the customers pay us uh with uh, for pregnant cows so many times i produce a, a farm here call us to do this ivf programs 
in the cows that already have been exposed to AI, or have already have been exposed to boss, to, to, to bulls, and not, not been pregnant in the decision. And then they took these animals to us. So probably we will not have a good result. Uh, in mature heifers, much times here, the, the people have uh, heifers of 12, 12 months, 13 months, and they, they want to put these animals in the programs and probably again we will not have but uh, the, the the best results lactin cows in uh thermical stress in bad nutritional conditions probably so uh, they, they will not have us best results too and old age cows that are have the, the fertility much uh, low fertility <clears throat> uh, it will not provide us the best results too uh, talking about the recipient's health, that's really important for the for these animals to keep the, the pregnancy and bring us a calf in the end of the program. The ideal situation here, uh, talking, I'm, I'm talking about here in Brazil, the diseases that we know that uh, maybe uh, decrease the indices of pregnancy and, the, and increase the indices of uh, reabsorption. Uh, so here we have programs to vac vaccinated animals of brucellosis, of IBR, that is rhinotracheitis, uh, vaccinated for uh, bovine diarrhea virus, lepto leptospirosis, that are the most uh, important protocol of vaccination that we use here in the receipts. Uh, in some times, in many, in many farms we already used uh, antibiotics uh, in the in the hormonal protocol but it's it is specifically specifically for each each property uh, and we used uh, we in the ideal situation again we, we can we probably have the worm and the ectoparasite controlled so we don't have ticks uh, and so on uh, in the real situation, uh, many times the receipts that you have to work uh, doesn't have passed through uh, vaccination programs and you have to do to run some exams to see who is able, who is not able to participate of this, these programs. The deworming, much times when you came at the farm, the animals have so much ecto and endoparasites, so you have to run the program of deworming during the sync protocol that it's not the ideal, but many times you have to do. Talking about the body condition of the receipts, the ideal situation is a good body score, the positive energetic balance, uh, rugage, mineral and protein supplementation. Rugage, if you are in a dry region, for an example, with bad condition of, of uh, grass and, and many things like that. In the real situation, we have uh, many times animals with inadequate body score. Uh, again, heterogeneity in the loads. And so many times in good condition, many, many animals in good condition, many animals in bad condition. And in sometimes that the, the, the people here want to do the, the programs during the, the dry period, we have animals in negative energy balance. And it really uh, put, put the levels of pregnancy down. Talking about the protocols, just a simple abordation here. Uh, we can change and choose the protocols for each load of animals. Uh, we can change the number of implant days. We can choose if you use one or two doses of prostaglandin. We can choose the, the pharmacos to ov ovulation induction, and we can observe and uh, use this information as, of the estrus manifestation to have better results. In the real situation, uh, for an example, this estrus, this, this, uh, this thing of see the estrus manifestation, much times we cannot uh, do this in some farms for management difficulties. And much times in big programs, you start a load of receipts and then in the other, other movements, they don't come to the, the, the yards. So we have much this here, no show. They don't came 
to, to continue the protocol. Uh, talking about natural estrus that bring us better results of pregnancy. It's a difficult situation to, to be practical here in good and in, in great in, in big quantities of animals. Uh, but if you can do this with some sticks that we have here or with good person in the farms who can do this work, you will really have best better results. Uh, one thing that we do here when you can do this, when you, you can uh, identify the animals that show the estrus, is to choose the better embryos for the animal that's expressed estrus. And uh, we have it in scientific comprobation. The result is about 15% better than the same embryos in animals that don't show the estrus. Um, donors, let's talk about donors. This is the, the main subject for me because as I said, IVF is a, a technician of uh, to, to multiply something. If you multiply the best cows, you have the best results. If you multiply the, the cows, as I said, in the, in the ideal situation, we have donors with the property age, the, the best age to do this with genetic merit, uh, they, uh, they are into some programs of improvement and you can identify and choose the best, the best cows that you have. Uh, I used in the projects that I run, that I management, the real data production. So we, have, we want to know uh, how many calves this, this, this cow uh, uh, this cow bring it to, to the system, uh, how, how many oils uh, this cow can produce. Uh, and in the real situation, much times the owners just choose the cow for liking. Ah, I like this cow, so let's do this with this cow without other information. And many times in many, in many farms, the, the, the owners just want to multiply very old cows, about 17, 18 years old, and the production of oocytes and the, the turn into embryos are really bad in these cases. Let's see this, this video of these donors. Uh, please have a look and in the standability of the animals, uh, the, the animals with about the same frame, with about the same musculature, and that is what this, this farm wants in the, in the IVF products. Talking about body conditions, here we have the, the, the opposite that we said in the, in the receipts. Much times the donors are excessively fat uh, with so much supplementation, talking about energetic supplementation, in, in sometimes in acidosis, uh, and it really uh, don't, don't work with uh, IVF programs. We have to have these, these animals in rugged, minor and, and protein supplementation with a uh, positive balance, energetic balance. And we have, to, we have some tools to do this in this nutrition. Like here in Brazil, you use a lot of protected fat to improve the, the, the condition of the animals and to, to this animal to have much energy to uh, apply in the reproduction system. And then we have better oocytes, mo more embryos, and more pregnancy. Here, just an example of good oocytes and then bad oocytes. The condition here was uh, related to age. It was in the same farm. One, uh, one of the, the donors, about six, seven years, and the other donor, about 17 years. Animal welfare. This is a really, a really item to have attention. Uh, in talking about, for an example, dairy production in Brazil, that is a, a that we have uh, the climate is is really hot, is really humid. We have to to put these programs of doing the embryos in in animals, for an example, with composition of hosting with uh, the most composition in the in blood of hosting. We have to, we try to work these animals in the, in the periods that the, the temperature here is more, is down, it is about 20 degrees, 22 degrees. 
uh, and the results of these projects in this period are really better than the results of these projects in the, the summertime. Uh, talking about the, the man management, uh, we have here uh, many lines of research, many lines of conduct to do the, the uh, welfare management without stress, without so much noisy, without many things like this, that uh, gets down the, the levels of cortisol and bring us in the end of the projects better results for everyone. Talking about semen quality, uh, as we said, we do a lot of tests here. We don't uh, have a technology to, to say, this is a good semen to IVF, this is not a good semen to IVF. So what we have is running a lot of tests and use no batches to the projects to not put in risk the whole situation. Talking about oven pickup, the ideal situation in the ideal situation, we will have expert technicians in OPU and OST search that will not provide some injuries in the ovary tissue uh, because every time that you injure the, the, the ovary tissue, the, it, will be, it will be formed a cicatricial tissue in the ovary. This cicatricial tissue have, haven't got function. So a uh, follicle who, which will increase in that place will not increase anymore. So if you injure the ovary tissue many times during the ovum pickup, this animal probably will have uh, low, per, low uh, quantities of oocytes in the, in the other sections, and it's not, uh, we don't want this, okay? In the ideal situation, we have good yards with good structure to contention. That is a, a really real problem here. Uh, talking about day reproduction, uh, much times we have to OPU the, the, the cows in the in the places that they have milk, and it's it's a really it's really difficult to do this with quality. Uh, in the real situation, we have many cows here that that are uh, that have been through many oven pickup sections with uh, secretricial tissue, uh, and many cows in bad in bad contention in dairy dairy farms. Here are just some pictures of uh, some structures that we can use uh, to have a good contention and to do a good OPU. Talking about the IVF uh, properly, uh, in the ideal situation, we will have good labs running uh, the, with good percentages of turn host in embryos. Uh, we will have good technicians in the field uh, we have how to send, receive, and pack the embryos. Uh, so it, it will be the, the, the ideal situation. But in the real world, we have here many labs that, uh, for an example, don't want to, to receive oocytes in Friday or in Saturday. Here, uh, I, I don't said it before, but I, I, my specialty is in beef production uh, uh, programs of IVF. And we have a breed season of three months because we want to concentrate the, the, the borns and we want to have animals uh, in, the, uh, in the standard ability condition. Uh, animals look like, one look like other. And many times the, the labs, the people in labs don't want to do, uh, don't want to have the same rhythm of work that we have in field. Uh, we have large distances to, 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 to travel. Uh, and this time during the travels are really important to use this time to do something like maturation of oocytes, like development of embryos and many things like that. Talking about the ET, uh, we use the protocols, the hormonal protocols of synchronization. And then we, uh, we have uh, in the day seven post estrus, we have the evaluation of these animals and we really want to have good CLs, CLs, we have a soft uterus. We, we want to have soft uterus. That means that progesterone is in high levels. And we, we want good contention to do the transfer because when the uterus is under high levels of progesterone, it's been really soft. And if you are, you have to put the embryo as deep as possible in the uterus, in the, in the uterus as the same sign of the ovulation. 
in the same time of the ovulation. And many times when you are uh, in the in the point to 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 put it, uh, the the receipts have some movement and you injury the uterus. So probably this receipt will not be pregnant. Uh, we we have here the Doppler technology, and we are using this in the in the last two years to choose the best embryos, the embryos that the, the cows that don't the donors that you have embryos that you want more pregnancy in the CLs that have more um, uh, circulation, uh, blood circulation, using the Doppler technology to identify these receipts. In the real situation, we have to choose the receipts according to the embryos. So you are in a farm with 200 receipts and you have just 50 embryos, for an example. You use, choose the best ones, the best CS, the, the biggest CS, the softest uterus, and you choose um, for, from each reality that you have this day. Many times you have too much embryos of quality, the, uh, beautiful embryos, and you have bad receipts, bad condition, bad bo body condition with uh, small CLs, with cavity CLs, and you have to transfer because if you don't transfer this, you will put these embryos, uh, you will not use these embryos in other situations. Talking about frozen embryos, we have here mainly two techniques, vitrification and direct transfer. Um, this, uh, probably IEDA, we will talk more about this, but just having a, a superficial line here. The in vitrification here, we have best results than DT, more uh, stable results, let's say this way. We don't have many vari variability in the results as we have in DT. Uh, with fresh embryos, in our experience, we have lower pregnancy levels than with uh, Frozen embryos, I'm sorry. We have lower pregnancy than fresh embryos. Uh, in, uh, when you, you do the OPU, you probably will have lower percentage of embryos, of frozen embryos than fresh embryos to transfer because uh, it will have to, you have to have more uh, careful to choose the embryos that will pass for the frozen process. Uh, these are the, the, the things that put that, that play against frozen embryos. The thing that play in the same way are uh, option to, to, to sell small quantities. So you have a producer in the about a thousand kilometers distance from the place that, that are the donors are. And you want this producer want to, to buy 10 embryos. With frozen embryos, you can sell these embryos to this producer. You can uh, travel uh, all around Brazil, all around the country doing these transfer, this, this transfers. The flexibilization of dates and distances Oh, in sometimes projects uh, here that you have to go by boat, many things like that, that you cannot uh, guarantee that you will be in the farm at the same day that you have to do the transfer. So we use uh, frozen embryos to do these projects. And many times genetic lines preservation, you have uh, small quantities of cows of that blood line that you want to keep in your, in your, in your herd. So you frozen a lot of embryos of these cows and then during the years you can do the transfers and using this bloodline uh, in many different years. Uh, talking about the, the technologies advantages. Uh, in Brazil, in FTA programs, we can uh, we already don't have expressive results with sexed semen, and in IVF we have. So in IVF, you can choose easily the the uh, what what uh, the calves you will have if they are female or male used using sexed semen. We can decrease the calving interval so. Um, in many projects here, we OPU hyphers of 20, uh, 12 months, 10 months, 11 months. And when this calf uh, complete, for an example, 20 months, it already have 20 uh, calves, 20, 20 animals, uh, 20 sons. Uh, 
so you can you can have much, uh, many many quantity of sons of a, a hyphae, for example. The genetic progress because you choose the mother and you choose the the the, the bull in IVF. Uh, you can increase the production levels by this genetic progress. You can uh, in good projects with good pro with good uh, realization. You can uh, all the involved will have profit. The technician, the farmers, the lab owners, everybody. And the, for me, one of the, 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 the best things that the IVF brings is the standardization of the animals. Let's see this video. These, these are 70 hyphers. Let's see the video. So these are 70 hyphers, all IVF product, products with about 13 months of age and all pregnant. Uh, could you see the same frame? Could you see the same musculature? The, the standardization of the animals. Uh, now many challenges of the technology that many times uh, do this, this technician be unviable to everyone. The losses of pregnancy, uh, uh, specifically in the first 30 days, we have many uh, cases here in Brazil of lose too much pregnancies. The difficult of calving in with these toxic uh, births, with uh, many many times uh, we have to do cesareans. We have to use protocols to interrupt the the, the growth of the the fetus. We have to use many protocols to do this, the receipts uh, getting, to do the, 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 the birth, né? To, to the calves getting born. Uh, another challenge is to choose donors who really will improve the genetic quality of their herd and make the programs to be profitable to all involved. Because it's, we know that the costs are, are really, really higher than other technicians. And so we have to bring best products or the technician will, will be unviable. Let's talk about two cases of clients that we have here in Brazil who used IVF projects with uh, good, good, uh, with well, well done. Uh, the Institute of Zootechnia breeding program started in 1976. This is a, a, gover a government of one uh, department of Brazil, Sao Paulo. Uh, this department have many farms, and in this farm, uh, speci specifically, they have a, a genetic uh, a program to genetic, genetic improvement of Nelori cows. With more than 40 calf crops evaluated, they have uh, uh, breeding objectives, clear breeding objectives, like decrease the slaughter age and increase the beef production for animal. The selection criteria are males, uh, body weight at end of feeding performance test with 15 months, and females body weight at 18 months of age. The selection strategies are one treat selection, so they just selected two body weight at the, these ages. And uh, other st strategies, use of young bulls 40, 40 years ago, now 50 years ago, uh, this was the first herd that started to use bulls with two years to do the reproduction and hyphers with two years uh, turning into reproduction. Uh, and they have a, a very careful study to avoid inbreeding. So here in this picture, you can see the males that are selected to be used like bulls are just the 7% most effective in gain, gain, in, in gain of weight. And the females are just the 65% more effective in this characteristic. 
here we have the show of the select the, 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 the genetic improvement. These two animals are of the same age, birth in the same farm, having the same treatment. The, and this animal have 40 years of selection. These animals have no years of selection. So they keep a control a herd to, to just to measure the, the, the real, the real uh, progress that genetic improvement can bring to the producers. Same alimentation, same conditions of, of, of creation. And this is the difference talking about cattle product, uh, beef production. Uh, we started the IVF program with Nalorin Cows from Institute of Zootechnia in, in 2017. Why, why I'm showing this case? Because uh, it's to, to show you how we choose our donors. We choose a project that makes sense for us to multiply. And then in this project, we go and see all the calls available to do the, the project. And then we choose the calls with better uh, merit in the genetic program with better uh, data of producers of real real data of producers and the objective of this program that we've done is to disseminate and sell this genetic and today we have more than 500 sections of your pu in about 100 melodic cows of this herd that have that have already uh, about 1000 cows and more than 10,000 embryos sold and transferred for beef production systems. The other case that I want, I want to talk about is a, a farm here that is our client for more than 10 years. And it's, the, the name is Colonial. It's a, a, a particular farm in a very dry region. In very dry regions in Brazil, we have uh, many, we don't have grain productions because of the rain. Uh, we have here the, 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 the regions that are more drier than others are specifically for beef, beef and dairy production. And this, this farm has more than 45 years working with Melodic Selection, more than 15 years using IVF uninterrupted. And the IV, why are they using these technicians uh, uninterrupted? Uh, from 15 years because it's profitable to them too. The IVF products with high values in the national market and multiple donors of semen in centrals with some donors selling more than 500,000 uh, 500, doses of semen. Some pictures of the herd, some pictures of the environment some pictures of the bulls that are in, 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 in centrals in, and some pictures of the, the events that they don't do to sell these animals. So the conclusion, the, IVN, the IVF technique use results in advantages to the production system. Sure, it, it will have uh, the, the, uh, a contribution to this, to all the system. The IVN technique must be well used. Many times you have to pay attention in other things before do the IV, before do IVF projects, for an example. If the animals haven't have a good uh, nutritional system, if they haven't have health, if they haven't have welfare, it's not the time to introduce IVF systems. The IVF, techn the IVF technique use involves challenges, risks, and costs, and it's very important to be clear to everyone that you have these challenges to do this work, okay? Thank you very much for your attention. And I am here to every, what you, uh, everything that you need. I have a privilege. So thank you very much, Dr. Rodolfo for the excellent, uh, excellent presentation. And you have a lot of questions to be answered, but before we move to that, we have a privilege of having uh, Professor Madan uh, with us. And I request you, sir, to address us. And uh, we will be very much uh, uh, encouraged with your words, the whole bovine embryo transfer group and all other veterinarians 
uh, listening to this webinar throughout the country and even uh, abroad as well. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are, you are mute, sir. Sir, you will have to unmute. Rajan, unko boliye. Yes, sir. I think it's now unmuted. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. Okay. Firstly, a uh, pleasure to be talking to this exalted group which uh, you have been able to collect together, especially in an area which we call as uh, the technology which will take our livestock and animal husbandry forward in this country. And for this, I compliment for your consistent and uh, uh, progressive approach, which has been over years. And uh, the way you have progressed is uh, phenomenal in terms of the fact that uh, uh, the ones which have got results on ground. Uh, that's the second point is that it was a very illustrative uh, presentation which was made by um, Dr. Bonilha. And uh, I think that a lot and lot of uh, uh, basic things which this technology requires uh, have been talked about in this. And uh, so my compliments to Rudloff also uh, at the outset. Now, since you said that uh, some comments are to be made, uh, comments are always uh, those that uh, which supplement to what has been said. And I would like to uh, say just a few things illustrate two things which need to be understood. In this country, as you know it very well, when we are talking of technology implementation, the serious point comes in terms of the delivery of the technology. The technology has been, uh, uh, I would say that uh, read and over and over again, the technology has been established and the important thing comes out how best we are able to take that technology to the user. And the user first has to understand what he is supposed to be doing about it. I remember at the time, and this was mentioned by uh, Rodloff also, that when we started with the embryo transfer technology, the first thing which uh, concerned us was, was about the endocrine profiles that what does an animal look like in terms of its endocrinology when we're talking of doing an exogenous hormone administration. At that point of time, I know that uh, we had hardly any information about animals in India and particularly the buffaloes with which we had, uh, I had a direct inclination to be working on because I found that they were real the dairy animals for this country. And so our approach was first to go over in understanding the cyclicity and understanding that what is happening to those animals which are not cycling, the animals which are not breeding, animals which have got long intercarbonic period, and animals which lack ovulation, they're anovulatory. So what is the picture in them? And that's what we started and got over into a large number of radioimmunoassays, uh, which are which at that time were very critical and today they are routine. But I remember that for producing uh, every, uh, for working out every radioimmunoassay that we had to go through the process of uh, radioidinating the hormone. And then we had to go to the process of uh, producing the antibodies and the second antibody, and then go over into the procedure. Today, those procedures are uh, right on the bench. You don't need to do that. Not only that, but today we have got a large amount of data which has accumulated over years. The data which tells us 
that what is happening inside an animal given a particular pathological or given a particular physiological condition. And using that, the world has moved forward and the science has moved forward. There has been one major breakthrough which has come uh, from the time when we started. And that was what we call the judicious use of uh, gonadotrophins and the prostaglandins. I wish uh, to convey it to, to uh, the trainees in here that uh, when we talk today, we used to do synchronizations at that time using the melanogaster acetate. That was a progesterational product. And using that, we had to bring about the, and this had got several difficulties. But today the oversynch formulas, which we have got using the GNRH and along with that, that using the estrogens, they have tremendously increased the capacity of synchronizing animals. And through synchronization process, that we find that our fertilization has increased. Going to the basic amount, basic interest in embryo transfer technology, I, um, I remember that in this technology, that what was said uh, a little earlier, not only is uh, the uh, donor important, but even the recipient is much more important than the donor. And then we should have good donors and equally good recipients. Your own work has shown that there are animals which are donating as high as 60 uh, oocytes, and then uh, you're fertilizing that in vitro. And we have seen that there are an animals and at times when we do not have any collection from them at all. So I think this becomes very important today that we should be having a good selection of donors and why are these uh, embryos to be used? Whether you are producing them in vitro or you are using the producing naturally and you are harvesting it from the female, they are to be used on the recipients. So the attention should go to the recipients. And it is here where the most critical thing comes and that is the nutrition. Uh, my, uh, my travels to Brazil and interaction with the teachers there and with the professors and people who are working in this area at that time. I have had the occasion to go almost about three times into Brazil and uh, visit them. Uh, the country is having uh, two or three tremendous advantages. Number one is that uh, they have got a very strong selection system. Through that selection system, they're able to pick up the best of the animals, especially that those which are not fertile get easily removed. And so that helps in the total process. The second thing was the availability of nutrition. See, uh, for us, I think that the first priority, when I talk of the program and transfer program, besides the technology, I said that we should be able to gear up the nutrition of the recipients so that the fertility rate is better, fertility rate is greater. And lastly, I would like to be speaking today because uh, I'm to speak just for a, uh, as an introductory word, is that uh, what is this uh, embryo transfer technology or IVF for us in this country meaning? So here for us, the, the formula is that we have to go to produce excellent bulls. We have to produce bull mothers. That should be where the approach is. And therefore we should have to take the best of the animals, or in other words, the elite of the animals. And from the light of the animals, we need to produce. If sometimes we are doing in our enthusiasm that we are doing embryo transfer, and then we end up in uh, using animals that whose average production is the same as the average of the herd, then probably that we are sure that we are not making any improvement and this technology is to increase productivity. So keeping that thing in view, I'm sure that uh, in your future uh, programs and your future broadcasts, which you are trying to make through the webinars, which is greatly appreciated, uh, you will try to put this thing in mind and into the workers also, that any program on IVF should also be supplemented with two other programs of which they should be careful about. 
One is the nutrition and another is the health. On that score, I thank you for this opportunity to have been talking to you uh, on this occasion. And I'm looking forward that in, in days and months to come, as you progress on this, that and uh, I'll keep my association with you and we will have a very fruitful program in the country. And we'll be able to do that, what has been envisaged of this technology. I remember that once this technology came on and we were able to do the first IVF in the country and subsequently several other more IVFs, that kind of technology was not taken up for several reasons. I would, as a matter of fact, at one point of time, I enumerate what were the reasons why this technology did not go up. But now when the technology has been taken up because the both sides of the coin are understanding, that means the user and the administration in this country, they are now understanding that we have no other way except to go this way. That is the highway, the highway of embryo transfer technology and IVF. And that's how the huge amount of money has been as, uh, into put up by the government of India so that this highway can be very safely traveled. And they are using good vehicles and Sham is one among them. Thank you very much. Sir, thank you very much uh, for your encouraging words. And we are so privileged. Uh, the Bovine Embryo Transfer Group is so happy to have you as our member. It's really, I mean, uh, you won't believe it, but the, my all members are extremely happy when uh, you, uh, you took over you immediately after your award of Padmashri, you uh, uh, accepted my request of uh, being a member of this group. And your words are always encouraging to all of us, all of us, sir. And I, you, I know you for last 46 years, if I can count, and uh, since my days in 1975, and I really cherish all those memories. And uh, really, sir, it's very nice of you to join with us today. Now, uh, Dr. Rodolfo, we have a lot of questions and we have enough time as we planned it, almost about 30 to 40 minutes for questions and answers. Uh, so I request even those we have not put the questions in the chat box, still it is open and I'll go through these questions and uh, request uh, Dr. Uh, Rodolfo to, uh, answer those uh, questions. Just give me one second. Okay, let me start it. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Muthara, uh, one of our member, as to what is the common used synchronization protocol for recipients in Brazil? Uh, Dr. Rodolfo, over to you. Uh, we, we use com we commonly use the, the same protocol of FTI with 10 or 11 days of progesterone implants and with doses of prostaglandin and with a dose of uh, estrogenous to induce the ovulation. We don't use very much here GnRH. Uh, do you, I'm, I'm asking this question, do you, uh, you don't use much of the SIDAR, these intravaginal uh, devices? Yes, we, we use cedar, uh, that is, and other kinds of progesterone implants. That's not just cedar here. We have Crestar, we have many others with different concentrations of progesterone. And we use each out to any uh, kinds of receipts. One thing which I have noticed it, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rodolfo, is that if you use in your synchronization protocol of recipient, if you use this, uh, pregnant mare serum, you know, Polygon, these products, which are available in your country, but unfortunately they are not available 300 to 400 international units in the protocol. You get better results. What's your Very opinion good. on that? Yes, we use, we use it a lot and it really increases the results of uh, the percentage of receipts that have ovulation and then you do the ET in these receipts. The, the, this, this is a, a very good uh, tool that we have here to use. And we really used it as uh, in many protocols. Again, the, the I'm other... sorry, we are, on the, we are on the same question. So I would like to ask you, in buffaloes I have seen, the estradiol cipionate is used. Why, what is the reason? Uh, Any it, ideas? It's, 
you, here we use the cpionate uh, of Estradio to, to induce the ovulation. As I said to you, probably Dr. Pietro will talk more about this with you, uh, of these uh, things of ph physiology, of the, the synchronization, but we here have these this tools, uh, using a Foligon, for an example, or use Calve Remove. Uh, if you can't use Foligon, you can use Calve Remove uh, uh, to, to have the same effect of uh, lower uh, with how, uh, for higher levels of uh, FSH and LH to get more estros, to get more ovulation, to, to transfer more embryos in the same quantity of receipts. There is Talking a, about synchronization. Yeah. There is a, one more question by Dr. Muthara. He's asking, do you give epidural before doing the transfer? Here in Brazil, we have uh, many technicians that use, many techni technicians that don't use. Me particularly, I, I prefer to use and uh, just to, to transfer many embryos in the same day, it really helps. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Karupa Swami. Shall we select cavity CL for the embryo transfer? Should we select the recipients having cavity CL for embryo transfer? As I said in the presentation, it's, it's a particular situation. You have much embryos that we will not use. You can transfer in these receipts. You have uh, frozen embryos. I, I choose not to transfer in cavity CLs. Okay. Uh, situation to situation. Dr. VP Bosley, he's asking a question as to what type of semen uh, testings are being carried out before using it for IVF? We use the semen in all cities from slaughterhouses. Uh, in ovaries, in, we, we, we collect ovaries in the slaughterhouses here, extract the oocytes, and, doing, and use this, this semen doing tests in these oocytes. So if it's good or not good, that's not, uh, not a, a, a it, we just know these batches of semen with this technique. Do you use lab mix incubator for IVM, IVF, and IVC? Uh, yes, we use a lot here. Uh, and uh, for th this, as I said, these travelings, these things, the, the lab mix helps us very much to have a better development of the embryos, to have a better maturation of the, the oocytes. Uh, we really use much here, lab mix. What is the ideal recovery rate of oocytes in terms of follicles ruptured? This Dr. Vinod Patil is asking as to what is the best uh, recovery rate you get it and what are the small tips if you can share with us as to how to get the best recovery rate from the follicles you puncture it? Uh, we can have here already, we have commonly about 90% of recovery uh, of the, the follicles that have present in the, in the ovary. Uh, the tips are to, to do it very calmly, don't uh, rush the process, have the animal in good contention, um, and have the equipment all good, the vacuum pump, the ultrasound, doing good images. The, the tips are in this way. 90% is superb, uh, Dr. Rodolfo. One thing I would like to ask you, you know, uh, there is a nest of follicles, you know, at the ventral side of the ovary, normally you find it. And their follicles are very small, 3 mm size. So uh, we do you recommend to puncture all of them? Number one question. Number two, I mean, when you are puncturing a follicle, do you need to keep that needle I mean, maybe for a second or something, instead of withdrawing it immediately, does it help in better recovery rate? Uh, for the first question, uh, we have a, an order. You punch first the small follicles to the ovary not uh, be so flaccid, to keep the, the, the structure of the ovary, to, and, so, and then you, you, you pump the big follicles. The, the, that are more more uh, uh, proximal to the ovulation. Many many lines of research here are saying that you should not pump the good follicles. 
because some uh, some substances that can uh, avoid the other oocytes to get mature and to to have good percentages of fertilization but it's just lines of research it's not compro it's not scientifically comproved here yet so today we uh, pump all the follicles and the small ones first and then the big ones the other question is the other question is that when you are putting a needle in the poly, in the in the follicle do you need to just hold for a second uh, before you go to the next follicle <laughs> it, it depends of the size of the follicle if you okay. just put for a second in a big follicle you probably will just rub the the the, the membrane and the, the liquid will you will not re recover this liquid to, to your your falcon tube but in small follicles yeah just a second and the depression is this time is sufficient to get the liquid into your system as we are on this follicle aspiration i'm sorry adding my questions still there are a lot of questions which i will be probably uh, unique for all of us i mean you know the like uh, uh, this uh, very important uh, point is that uh, sometimes when you are stimulating you know boss torus animals the follicle size is quite big and the moment you puncture it and then they uh, get it immediately filled with the blood so how 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 to differentiate them with the can you suggest us how to differentiate and so that you don't come back to the same follicles again? If you don't injure the tissue of the ovary, you not have blood in the, the follicles. Okay. Okay. You, in, in the aspiration, in a, in, a, in, a, in a good aspiration, you have blood just of the, uh, the vaginas and because you have to prefer the, 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 the end of the vagina and then in the ovary, just the follicles borders and the follicles borders are not, uh, you don't have much blood. So uh, if there is blood coming into the follicle, it's because you are injuring the, the ovary tissue and it's not uh, good for, for the, the cows, for the donors. Uh, so it, the, the thing is try to avoid uh, injuries in the ovary. What sort of a pressure, suction pressure, you use it? It, it depends uh, about the, the breeds of the donors. In Nelori here, we use about 90, uh, from 90 to 120 millimeters of mercury. I don't know. I don't know the, the, the unit that you use to measure the pressure. Here is millimeters of mercury. And you use 90, from 90 to 120. More than it, you can have uh, a, 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 the, the extraction of the cumulus cells and less than it, you can have bad rates of recovery. Okay, that's very interesting. And uh, now the another thing is that what should be the, the length of the tubing where through the, the, the tubing, silicon tubing through which you collect the, you connect it to the, for the OPU, what should be the length? Is it a longer length we will come in the way of uh, having the denudation of the oocytes? No, uh, here we use about one meter, one meter and 20 centimeters. But for me, the, I, I have OPU cows in many, many uh, places and with many, uh, how can I say, different, uh, different things. and. I can't see really a difference about this. The, 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 how long is the line? Here we call line. How long yeah. is the line? But uh, I don't see the denudation. I see more denudation, more bad quality of your oocytes in donors, in bad nutrition, in very old donors, in things like that. The equipment being well, being good, uh, clean line is, could be one meter, one meter and a half. I, I really don't, uh, don't have different results for this. What is the size of the needle which you recommend? 18 uh, gauge or 20 gauge? It's again, uh, you can use 16 gouges, you can use 18 gouges. It depends, for me, it depends very much for the contention. If your cow is moving, uh, you probably will have to use, uh, how can I say, bigger, bigger 
needles. If your cow is very good in contention, in contention is really good, you can use small, small needles. I, I'm talking about the, the, the gate gouges. Uh, and about the, the, the size, uh, it's, it's, it's a preference to each technique. You have to, to, to see ah, in which one I'm feeling uh, good to use. So I will use this one. Dr. Rodolfo, we have a lot of youngsters who are coming up into this uh, IVF, you know, technology. I would like you to say a few words as to, I mean, uh, for uh, getting mastered into the OPU technique, what, what, what are the things one has to do it to really get going and then he can say that, okay, I'm, I'm excellent at OPU. So can you, can you suggest? Yeah. I think I think that you have to to see the how many follicles are there and how many mm -hmm. oocytes you have in from this and consider okay. the the donor condition. If the donor condition is in bad nutrition, is is uh, too young or too old, or with multiple CLs or with uh, and and cyst, a cyst is, is is this? I don't know if if you if you know this word. Uh, probably the problem is not in you. The problem is in the donor. Uh, if you do this in many cows and the problem persists, the problem is in you. So that is the, the, the meaning. You have to, to see what are you doing, uh, see the, the, the percentages of recovery, see the quality of the oocytes. If it's, it's a constant badly problem, probably the problem is in your uh, technique, in your, uh, th the thing that you are doing. And, but if sometimes it's good, you, you are doing the same thing. And in some donors, the results are very, really good. In some donors, the results are really bad. You have to look the other variables as nutrition of the donors, uh, content, uh, the, the contention and many things like that. I don't know if it's, it answered your question, but it's, yeah. it's in this way. Okay, I have uh, one thing, you know, with the, as you know, boss indicus, jeer uh, or ongol, nelori, you call we ongol here. They, yeah. they really are prolific oocyte producers. In such donors, it's very difficult to count the follicles, you know. You get, I mean, normally you see so many follicles and you just start uh, puncturing the follicles. And then, you know, what happens exactly? You ask the lab person as to how many oocytes he, we got it. And then they said, oh, we've got about 30 oocytes. Then we add another few number in that and we said that many follicles we have punctured it. So this is a sort of a, you know, psychologically I have seen it. So how do you really count and say it's a, you are able to get a 90% recovery? You really count the follicles first before you start puncturing them. That's my question. In, in, the, uh, in the beginning, yes, I counted every follicle and use this to see if I am in, the, in my, my period of training, I do this. I count in every follicle. And much times, I, when I, I, I see that I, I am doing this in a good way, is because I count, for an example, 40 follicles. And in the lab, they find 45 oocytes. So many small follicles that I don't have counted are, are being punched too. Uh, so in the beginning, yes. And then we, when you have more experience, you just have a look for the ovary, you have a look for the image, and then you, you how can I say, uh, just uh, do, do a, do a, a supposition of how many yeah. follicles are there and start to pick up. Because many times here, uh, uh, another thing, here in Brazil, we are trying to do IVF, a massive uh, tool to improve genetics. We don't, we don't look for, uh, uh, obviously we, we pay attention on every detail to get good results, but we, we, we want here to put the technician in practice. So uh, I don't have very good donors. Okay, but can we do this and it will be good for the whole process? Yes, okay, let's do. No, uh, these details are determined not to do this. So we don't, do, we don't run the project. Okay, I mean, before I move to the next question of other uh, person, other, uh, one of our participants, I have one more question. Sorry, I'm asking you so many questions there. No, no one problem. thing I wanted to check with you is that, you know, how, how many days or how many weeks, say a new person is there, he's, he's masters in animal reproduction, 
He's a veterinarian, masters in animal reproduction, good at AI. He knows how many weeks or something, I mean, what sort of a duration he will need to say that, okay, I can do OPU very comfortably now. I mean, it's a very tricky question I'm asking you, but just your views on this. Let's, let's say about 500 cows until oh. start doing it professionally. Uh, about okay. this number. It depends on oh. much of the person. Some persons with 100 cows, with 50 cows. Uh, uh, for me, for an example, personally uh, talking, um, I hope you about 250 cows before I start doing it professionally. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now there is a question from Dr. Sanjay Gorani. He is asking you, uh, do you select the recipients uh, this we have uh, with the cavity CL, yeah, we discussed it, sorry. Yeah. Uh, which stays of embryos are ideal for freezing? This is a question from Dr. Vishnu. Uh, normally here we just froze uh, BX and BN. The, the embryos we, uh, that uh, came at that stage in the days six and seven post, post IVF. Uh, so we, we, uh, we, how can I say, we, we been looking at it every day and the embryos that have good membranes, uh, that have good development, we use to, to, to froze. We don't froze embryos too young or too old. Okay. There is a question from Dr. Sanjeev Ch uh, uh, Chaubal. What is the, this is a really a very important question to all of us. What is the maximum duration you can keep fresh embryos loaded in the straws in the incubator? You know, you carry them into the straws for a distance places. What is the maximum number of hours you should keep it? Is the pregnancy rate will differ it, say, if you keep it for one hour or if you keep it for six hours or if you keep it for, say, 12 hours? Yeah, we, we hear uh, that work with six hours. Uh, we pack the embryos and six hours before it, it's better to be transferred. Okay. And, 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 and the, the, the pregnancy rate is really, really go down with embryos that have been packed for a long time. And, and short time, no, short time. If, if you pack now, you can transfer it. The, the results probably will be gooder than, than much time packed. Probably okay. talking about talking about my experience. It's not scientifically comproved. I'm talking just about my experience. But say in case if you if you take the embryos uh, loaded into the lambic incubator, and then a embryologist goes along with it, and then he loads the embryo there and there itself at the farmer's place, and he transfers a within one hour uh, after the loading, uh, will the pregnancy rates? with that will be much better will it be better i mean are there any uh, much much better no that? it will be it will be better in the average we, you, we're talking about here for uh, many numbers in for an example in fourteen thousand embryos this percentage is really is really important for us but if you are transferring 10 embryos 15 embryos probably this percentage will not be re representative for your 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 th your process uh, we try to do here the best as we can. So we run the, the embryos in development and then many times me, uh, I, I go myself to a property, for an example. I do the pack, I do the transfer. For about 100 and embryos, 100, 150 embryos, I can do this myself. For more than these, I have to, to take with me a person to do the lab, to do the, the, the pack. And I go to the yards to do the transfer. So uh, as I said to you, we have we try to do the best as possible to each project to give the best results. Yeah, and Dr. Rodolfo, you know, India is a country wherein you know this technology is still very young, uh, not as uh, you know prolifically done in your country. So, in rightly said, we have a small numbers, 10, 20, like that, and we don't want to take any chances in uh, uh, reducing our pregnancy. So, we want to take the maximum precautions to start with the program. And then once we start getting results, we will get a confidence and then we can move on further. Thank you for that. And now uh, we have a question coming in uh, from again, Dr. Muthara. He's asking, does the CL corpus luteum size 
will affect the pregnancy because it has been seen, uh, some of the practitioners here, they, we measure the size before we transfer the uh, embryo. We, we see if, if it is to be over than more than 15 mm is the size we are always looking for. Does the size yes. of the scale, is it necessary to measure it? Do you measure it them regularly? Or, uh, yes. or do you, or, uh, yeah, or? We, we measure, we measure as the, the, the follicle, as the follicle countage, we do a, a perception of the technician that is doing this technique. And we, we note this in every transfer that we do. And talking about numbers, yes, uh, bigger CLs bring us more pregnancy rates. Okay, there is a related question to this itself. Say in case, uh, I mean, you know, earlier before this ultrasound was there, you used to do always detect the CL with your hand only. So, I mean, uh, how, how far, how many practitioners in Brazil, they don't, at the time of transfer, they don't use the ultrasound and they just palpate with the hand and then they transfer the uh, embryos. Probably, Is it probably, probably half a half. A half. Me, for an example, I don't use ultrasound in, in, in projects that you have to transfer many embryos in the day. If you have the time, yeah, how you transfer just 50 embryos today? Okay, let's use ultrasound. No, you have to transfer 300 embryos this day. That's not time to use the ultrasound for every receipt. And so it's, again, it depends on every program, on every situation, on every day, on every farm. It's, it, how many embryos you have transferred in a single day? The, the most quantity, 430. Ah. Oh my God, okay. Yeah. Now there is a question from Dr. Vinayak. If you select an animal having a cavity seal, what will be the minimum size of seal or size of the cavity? I think that has been all answered already. And yeah. then Dr. Karupa Swami again, as you are experienced, please suggest us maximum age of the donors you can use in OPO program. What is the age yeah. limit? Uh, th there is no age limit, but how older is he? Is, is the cow talking about 12, 12 years, 13 years, 14 years? Probably it's not in in every situation. Probably your results will be will be will be going down with more age, but it's just probably some cows. Many herds used cows of 20 years. Too many pregnancies of these these cows, but. Uh, it's, it's in, in average, it's not really good to use. If you want to have pregnancies, uh, rates, uh, the, the maximum pregnancy rate is, it's better to use cows under 10 years. There is a question from Dr. Ramachandra Reddy. What is the temperature used for transport of fresh embryos? And in how many hours we can transfer them without reducing much conception rate of the recipients? I think it's only... Temperature. Yeah, the, temp the, temperature, the temperature to development, we use about 38 degrees. And the temperature used uh, to transport pack embryos, about 37 degrees. Okay. There is one more question for how much time we can keep fresh embryos in astrology. I already discussed this. Then there is a question from Dr. Vinayak. Can we transfer embryo to other horn of the other horn tip apart from the CL horn side? What is the reason? No, here we don't transfer. Just, just transfer in the same horn of the CL every time. Very true, very true. Dr. Chaubal is asking again, how practical is thawing of vitrified embryos under field conditions? Do you... If, yeah, if you have good conditions in the field, it's, it's, really, it's really, really common here. We use much... Uh, uh, talking about this uh, time of packed embryos, in, in frozen embryos, I prefer to transfer embryos in maximum two hours post defrozen. More than this, uh, the pregnancy rate is go down. So we in common use to do this lab, the lab in the field, in the farms, and do the devitrification during the transference. Uh, so you do the devitrification and just transfer uh, as, as soon as possible. Okay. Uh is there any, I mean, the question, I mean, I would like to ask you uh, this direct, uh, uh, the slow cooling freezing and the vitrification, as you said, in Brazil, you use more of the vitrified embryos. Am I right? Yes. But uh, Dr. Rodolfo, then if you are using the vitrified embryos, then uh, normally in our cases here, 
the person who is doing embryo transfer, he also need to be trained to look at the embryos because otherwise we have to send a embryologist to devitrify them and load them. Uh, in my team here, all the vets are trained to uh, pack embryos, do the devitrification and do the transfer and OPU are just two, but we, we, we work with five vets. All the five vets can do the devitrification. We as a beginners in India, I have a question, you know, before we really get more and more number, when we do the vitrification, I mean, if you do de-vitrification and keep the embryos for about say two hours and watch them as to how they are going, is it advisable or not advisable? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a choice. You can try to do this, probably your results will be better. But here in Brazil, we have a, a common problem. Uh, you do the vitrification of the embryos of a producer. You set him. Uh, you have a uh, hundred embryos uh, frozen, and then you go to the farm to do the transfer. Uh, from this hundred embryos, we just transferred ninety. It's a problem. If I try to, if I start to do this to observe, to do this observation, and uh, two hours, and then do the transfer, uh, probably the number will reduce more. And so uh, you have sent a hundred embryos, and then ninety, and then eighty. So it it's it becomes a problem to the producer. Another thing that uh, when you put this these embryos again to observation. To, to, to do this observation two hours later in the pack media, it's not really good for the embryo. So you have again for one side and a problem for other side. I really prefer to see the embryo. If the structures are all good, do the transfer, not, not, not uh, wait two hours. Okay, I have a, one more thing. When you are, that, that's not a really a practice, but when you do slow cooling, and you are supposed to do a direct transfer. Can this direct transfer frozen embryos also be thawed and checked and then reloaded? I mean, it no, doesn't no. serve the purpose of- It could be, it, it, it could be done, but we don't do this. Uh, the, the, the direct transfer here is just to resolve this problem, not have an embryologist, not have a microscope, not have nothing this in the field. If you do this, you probably will not get, get, uh, have this, this advantage. So the meaning of do the slow frozen, uh, you don't have why to do this. No, I, I agree with you. But as we are in a, you know, we are talking about very small numbers. Uh, that is the reason we wanted my all, you know, every, every practitioner here would like to you can do. See, you can see in the, in the, in the, I don't know straw. what to do. Yeah, you straw, can see straw. it. Yeah. If you have a microscope, you can see this into the, 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 the pack. Let's say that, so that is a, that is a good suggestion that you you direct transfer you thaw it and see the straw under the microscope then you transfer it right yeah it will not be very, uh, very how can I say you cannot see many details but you can see yeah. the, if it's uh, if it's uh, alive let's say that's way okay okay there is a question from Dr Amol during embryo transfer at which place of the horn you deposit the embryo and how much time will you take to do the transfer. As, as deep as possible, as long as as possible in the horn, uh, as, as uh, in, uh, 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 how can I say, uh, the time depends of the receipt. Many times, for an example, in Bos Indicos, normally the horns are uh, smaller. In Bos Taurus, in dairy cows, the, the horns are bigger. So the, the time depends on the breed of the receipt. Dr. Rodolfo, I don't mind. If you don't mind, can you give us some more time? I will highly appreciate the sure, whole group. Sure, sure. Thank oh, you very okay. much. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, there I, I'm sorry. Questions. I'm sorry just to, 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 to talk many things about Brazil. You have uh, in India a, a completely different uh, 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 way of produce, of produce the things. So if I, I'm talking uh, things that don't make sense for you, please let me know and we can talk about this. No, no, no. We, I mean, we, we, these are a lot of questions coming at, from my colleagues. Uh, there is one more question. Which day you prefer to transfer the embryo in the recipients? There are some repetitions also. The seven so day post estrus. Right. 
There is one more question from Dr. Muthara again. Uh, uh, just, just, just the question. thing. It's not my Sorry. preference. Is the the what the the, the 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 data here shows that is better to give more pregnancy? Yeah. Uh, the site of transfer affects the pregnancy. The site, yes. If you how how deep you put the, the embryo, more pregnancy will have. And again, talking about experienced technicians that will put the embryo uh, in the, the final of the horn without do many many injuries in the uterus. Okay. There is a there is a question, you know, uh, that uh, the left side transfers are always uh, difficult than the right side. Is it uh, is it uh, the just, same experience? Just, uh, no, that you have to do, develop your technician to get the same, get into the same point in the right side or in the left side. It's not not uh, for uh, when you give the the experience to do this. Uh, probably the the pregnancy levels will be the same in both sides. When you are uh, there is a Dr. Vinayak asking a question. If you are passing through the cervix at the time of embryo transfer, and it takes more time to get uh, through the cervix and then it scratches to the horn wall, will the pregnancy rate will be affected? Yes, yes. Uh, how how uh, much less you movement the uterus, you can do this naturally, better rates you have. If you have to move much, if you have difficult to pass through the cervix, probably your pregnancy rates will be lower. For an example, if you have many, uh, I don't know if you use protocols of synchronization with many animals, but you have uh, 50 receipts. You have 20 embryos. Choose the ones that you see that the, the uterus is softer than the others. The cervix are more regular without many curves. Choose these ones. Then in probably, if you have problem, for an example, to transfer in the left side, choose the, the, the ones that have ovulation in the right side. So choose what is easier for you and what you can do best if you have less embryos than receipts, okay? Thank you. What is the approximate pregnancy rate with the frozen embryos in Brazil? And what are the recent advances in freezing technique? As you know, IVF freezing, uh, freezing of IVF embryos, uh, actually in a country like India, where we have a, the only way to take this technology to the farmer's doorstep because our farmers are holding one animal, two animal. We don't have the recipient herds like 4,000 and 5,000 in Brazil. So we have to go to the small farmers. So there, you know, ultimate uh, solution will be using the frozen embryos for transfer. So how, how to, this is a really a serious problem as to what sort of a rates, if you can tell me what sort of a rates you get with the fresh embryos and what sort of a rates you get with the frozen embryos and how to uh, improve the rates with the frozen embryos to, to rate the, the improve, to improve the rates if frozen embryos choose better receipts every every, every if you have better the, the the good receipts your your results with fresh uh, with frozen embryos will be closely to a fresh embryos if you have uh, the receipts in bad conditions probably your fresh embryos will will be very better than frozen embryos and yes it's it's a tool to do this you can, uh, how can I say, you can see in this, in this place, we have 10 little farmers with two receipts that can, we can use in the same day. So you do a point, you do the lab in a point, uh, do the, un, the unfrozen and then go to each farm and do the transfer. It could be a tool. Uh, we can have, we have to find a way to do this. And we have to, sh to, to talk about the risks, to talk about the, the, possibility of uh, low pregnancy rates and to talk about the advantages that the technique can bring to the producer, to you, to everybody. What are the pregnancy rates you get with the fresh embryos on an average and with the frozen embryos? And this year uh, for uh, about 12,000 uh, di diagnoses, we have in the fresh embryos 51% of pregnancy in the 30 day post uh, estrus and we have 36% in the frozen embryos. The number of frozen embryos is very is, is really smaller than the fresh embryos. We have just 1,070 
and 700 uh, frozen embryos transferred. So we here in our projects really prefer to use fresh embryos. We just use frozen embryos when we need to use. But Dr. Rodolfo, as you said just now that these are the pregnancy rates at 30 days of pregnancy. But as you know, you get losses right up to the 90 days. And our system over here is that we charge, uh, the farmers will pay you, the veterinarian, only at 90 days of confirmed pregnancy. So that's where we have to look at the pregnancy percentage. So what sort of a losses you uh, think you get it from the 30 days pregnancy to say 90 days? Yeah, here in Brazil, the, the question is to, to, to do the end of the program with 60 days of, of pregnancy and do the, and you know the, 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 we, uh, the, the if it's male or female and you uh, end the process with 60 days. But uh, we have here, in this year, the average is in about 7.5% of losses from the 30 to the 60 days. And these losses are really uh, variable from farm to farm. The farms that have good programs of nutrition and health in the receipts are really, the, 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 the losses are really smaller than the other farms that don't do nothing in this, this way. Just, just talking about uh, this, um, there are many hormonal protocols that are being testing here too to try to uh, put these this numbers to small, small uh, to, to uh, put down these losses, but not scientifically proved yet. Yeah, there is one question from Dr. Ajit Nair. On which day of the cycle OPU is, uh, uh, is best to get the maximum number of the oocytes? Yeah, we don't do the, the synchronization in the donors. The donors yeah. are, are OPU on the seventh day of the synchronization of the receipts. So the IVF is, uh, is done in the same day of the Astros show. While selecting the donor, is the size of the ovary matters? Uh, yes, uh, in, a, in a way, yes. If, for example, as I said, I consider it as a, a multiplied technician. So if you choose a donor with uh, uh, the capacity, bad capacity of produce oocytes, it's not interesting for any, anyone. You have too much, uh, uh, many, uh, uh, less than, uh, let, let's say, you, in a physiological way, you can have one calf year. Using a donor which produces uh, small quantities of oocytes, you have two calves. It's for us here in our system, it's not, not uh, pay the costs of the technician. You have to have more than 10, 11, 15 calves of the same cow. Okay. We have a, when Dr. Shrikanti is asking one question, can we extend the viability of the embryos by lowering the, by breeding, bringing down the temperature of the incubator while transporting the embryos to long distance? Is okay. that... Temperature lowering helps in increasing the viability of embryos. It's uh, no, it's it's uh, how can I say? It's a, a, a little influence, but many times uh, we do this here again without scientifically comprovement. Just about feeling, we we see that if you are uh, running late to do a transfer, put down the temperature, and when you do the pack, probably you will have less embryos. Uh, in, in this, more embryos in the stage that you want. If you are running late, if you're running in the time, just keep the temperature, do the pack and do the transfer. If you're running late, you can use, try to use this. But again, it's not scientifically comproved. It's just a feeling talking about my experience. experience. Yeah, and then one, uh, one more question is that when you are selecting a donor, for example, if you know, there is a donor which is not, which is infertile and not getting pregnant by AI, but she has got a very good genetic record and milk production record. Can such uh, animals with an infertility problem, can they be used as a donors? Yes, uh, many times here you use this, but it's important to, to consider it if it's not a congenital problem or if it's a problem that this donor have during the life. 
if there is a possibility to, to transfer it for the, the next generations, it's better not to use because you have many, many, many calves of this cow. And uh, these calves, if there is a chance to have this problem, uh, I said to you not to use. But if it's a problem, for an example, uh, a dystocic birth and uh, many injuries in the ovary, yes, you can use and you can produce more calves of this cow. There is a question from Dr. Naresh. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Naresh is specialized in uh, making clones. So his question is a good talk. Thanks for sharing your views. Which method of vitrification is used for cryopreservation of blastocyst stage embryos? How much percentage of pregnancy losses in the first trimester OPU to IVF embryos? Is there a difference in pregnancy rate data on box in incubator versus benchtop mixed gas incubator. Uh, cost of one IVF calf in Brazil as to what is in much US questions. dollars. There are so there are many much questions. Too many uh, questions. So we, we talk we talk about 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 the, the losses, uh, the difference. We have, we have answered some of these questions, but uh, what is, what will be the cost of an IVF calf in a uh, Brazil? How much it will cost in US dollars? It depends much of the size of the project. If you have uh, many receipts, many donors, we can do this with all fresh embryos, it's one cost. If you do uh, two, three donors and want to do uh, 100 uh, calves, for an example, the cost will be other because you have to OPU many times, do the frozen embryos and then do the transfers. It, it's, it's, it's not... not uh, how can I say it's not simple to do this to, to say this number, but something about 150 130 dollars for receipt pregnant. But again, just an average that could be very variable. Uh, we we will take another 10 minutes of yours, Dr. Rodolfo, no, because there's some I'm, questions. I'm, I'm here, I'm here for you all good, the time. Good, good, good. So nice because some questions are coming from Facebook, you know. Uh, we because we had this in Facebook Live. Question uh, is from Mohammad Farooq. Does FSH help in OPU in zebu animals? No, we don't use this here. We just use uh, we, we just OPU the donors without any protocol of superovulation. Because one of the most advantages of the technique, uh, comparative in the comparison to ET to uh, natural producers of embryos is this you have your donor uh, free to get pregnant to be opioid during the pregnancy to and you don't uh, give any risk for for the donor if the technician is is, is an expert to do the opio uh, so we don't use super in donors we don't use nothing in 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 donors we just use protocols of nutrition just this there is a question from one mr Khairnar who has who is maintaining a very good herd of jeer animals in, in India uh, is an indigenous farm. What is the average milk production of a gear cow in Brazil? It's not related, but- no, uh, But that's okay, that's okay. That, that's really important to the donor choice. Uh, uh, here in Brazil, we have the, the, the recordists with about 60 kilos of milk day, gear, gear, uh, gear cows. And the average, I don't know, I don't know, to, uh, let's say about eight liters, 10 liters. I don't know. I really don't know. That's not my specialty, but I'm just uh, talking about what I, I think. Okay, okay. Then there is a Dr. Gunashekaran. What is the systematic approach India should adopt to launch at the IVF program at a farmer's level? It's a very big question. Yeah, very, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I really don't know your reality. And you again, have to visit I'm, India to you have to visit India to uh, really know uh, give an answer to this question probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know right. if I, I can be I can be able to 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 answer, but uh, I can show you my point of view. But able to answer this question really is to have to have to have to, to be a person. With experience in your in your country, with your producers, with your reality, that is really different for our here. Yeah, there is one question: What approach should we be taken in an organized form to improve a breed using IVF? 
Uh, it depends on the, 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 the point that the, this farm wants to go. Uh, if you, if you uh, again, it's a difficult question. You have to see the, the, the way that the, the, the farmer wants to go, how uh, many, how much he is able to improve in these programs, uh, for uh, how long he wants the results. Um, I think it's, it's a very particular question. Uh, Dr. Rodolfo, this question repeatedly people are asking, and you know, they do a good at time of OPU, they do a good rupture. They feel they have ruptured many follicles, but when they get the result from the laboratory, the number of oocytes are really very, not that high, as you said, if you start getting 90% or even more than 70%, we all will be very happy. So do you have something, some more, you already given enough tips to us, you may have some more tips you can share with us. Uh, let, let's see. Practice much the images. Uh, the follicle have to be very clear in the screen. Uh, you have to know, you have to have some, some uh, uh, ways to, 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 to know where you are in the ovary, where the needle is coming into, and not to injure the ovary tissue. It's about this. Uh, you, even in IV, in OPU and ET, uh, each person will develop your sensibility to do this in the best way. Many peer persons here in Brazil OPU the the, the cows with uh, how can I say a position of the body like uh, size in the cow. I just OPU in front of, uh, with my my face uh, into the the. The, 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 I don't know, you have to develop your, your way to do this, but the importance is know where you are, uh, know where the needle is, uh, know uh, how to uh, punch the follicle without injuring the ovary tissue. Yeah, so it's really a lot of, uh, lot of practice and practice. Uh, that yeah, is yeah, the yeah. One. That's the answer. Practice but, is the answer. You have to practice in many cows that don't have merit, uh, importance, genetic, talking about genetics, again, talking yeah. about genetics. You have to try to do this in these cows. And then you think, yes, I'm good. I'm, I'm counting the follicles. The number of oocytes that I have in front of these cows is okay. It's about 70%, 60%, 70%. Okay, I can start to do this. And again, if you hope you many cows, the same cow many times, you will see the cicatricial tissue in the ultrasound. If you are doing uh, injuries, you are not doing good. You have to open the same cow three, four, five, six times, and it don't have to. It uh, it have to be very small points of cicatricial. Okay, in this program, in this case, for an example that I, I showed to you of Institute of Zootechnia, these hundred cows. There are many. Uh, there are two cows here that been through uh, 100 and, uh, 150 sections of the OPU and is still producing oocytes because of this. They don't have injuries in the ovary. Uh, there is one question, you know, from my side, you know, it's already normally observed that one, once a donor uh, is good producer of oocytes and she does it for two, three times, she, he, she remains a, a good producer. And there are some donors which they don't produce good. They don't turn out to be a good producer afterwards. So is it correct? Uh, 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 the, the, the size of the ovary is related to the capacity of producer of oocytes and the, 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 the uh, nutrition man management. Uh, the same donor with a good nutrition management with big ovaries, with a, popul a population of follicles big, probably if you do the technician with, uh, with careful, you will have this donor producing oocytes for you for a long time. We, if, in case if you have a good donors, uh, that's what we have experienced, I myself have experienced it. I mean, uh, what's your, there are some research papers that you aspirate them even uh, twice, a, a, two times in a week, say every Monday and Thursday, yeah, and you get good results even doing rather than once in a week. What are your views on this? 
Yeah, I don't like to do this. I, I, I prefer here in our donors that we work, I, I work with a, a, a gap of minimum 25 days to do another OPU, just to, to have a cicatrization of the, end, the, the, the vagina and to not have uh, adherations, I don't know, uh, to not bring some tissues of the ovary, of the, the, the vagina. I, I prefer a gap of 25 days or more. Oh, that is an excellent suggestion we all should take up uh, from you because uh, it should be at least three weeks gap should be there between two OPU uh, so that this donor can be used for a long time. Am I yes, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, because uh, you rightly said that, uh, and uh, say if you do a OPU, say every three week, and you do it uh, throughout the year, maybe year or two year, uh, after that, or more, or more. In this program, even, there, there are many donors that are in the program from seven, eight years. Oh, seven, eight years you are using continuously, and yeah. and if you decide, and, and to as I said, you with one hundred and fifty sections of OPU. And they still produce in the same quantity of oocytes of the first, of the beginning. So this is a good learning from your talk, you know, because uh, the and it should be if you decide to impregnate them any time with artificial insemination should not be a difficulty. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Many times here in this program of the the, the Institute of Zootechnia, we sell many donors pregnant after doing this, the, 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 the selling of embryos of them. So it's uh, for, uh, the, 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 the principle, the, the, the main condition that you have to observe is the fat, because this cow will not produce calves because we're OPU them all month. And probably in this way of system here that we have, that you uh, selected for gain of weight, these cows should, uh, could be too much fat to be pregnant again. So you have to do the opposite. Limit the, the, the nutrition for, for him, for, for these cows, and then uh, do the artificial insemination or put bulls in, in them. And a lot of them, yes, get pregnant again and you can use as a, as a field cow. Very good. Uh, there is a question. Uh, what is uh, what is an average uh, per animal oocyte recovery? What sort of average recovery of the oocytes you get? It is asking. It depends much on the breed. For talking oh, about yeah. Nelori, about forty oocytes for for cow. Talking about gear, about twenty oocytes for cow. It depends on the the the, the breed. If talking about host and about six, five, six oocytes for cow. The, the, the Taurus, the Bos Taurus, normally produces less oocytes than Bos Indicus. Bos Indicus are better producers in oocytes for us here. But in case of Bos Taurus in Brazil, with this Holstein region breed, do you stimulate them or you even don't stimulate them also? Don't stimulate. I mean, in my projects, we don't stimulate. You, you, you pre we prefer to do the OPUs in the, the as I said, in the, the periods with uh, low temperatures and they produce more oocytes, viable oocytes, and produce more embryos. But I don't do this. There are many technicians that that do this this superovulation. But for me, do superovulation to do OPU is not. Uh, I I don't I don't like to do this. I, I think it's not. Uh, okay. And what sort of an average I've, oocytes you get with the Holstein uh, region with the Taurus Taurus uh, uh, dairy animals? Holstein or Jersey, what sort of average oocytes, number of oocytes you get? About six, seven for, for old cows. For heifers, this number is a little bigger, about 15, 12 oocytes for, for OPU section. Okay, uh, one more question is to how many uh, average number of good embryos, uh, really transferable, viable embryos, uh, is the average per OPU in Brazil? Uh, breed we wise, you can say. Yeah, we consider here about 30% uh, under the, the viable oocytes. So you have to OPU three oocytes, vi three viable oocytes to get to an embryo. That's our, our average here. But we have many, many farms that this average is very higher. We have ha farms here with 50% of embryos under the, the uh, talking about, I have 100 
viable oocytes. I can count with 50 embryos in some cows, but the average is 30 embryos for 30% of embryos. No, but average, what we am asking you that what is the average number of embryos? Uh, it's depend on the oocyte, but what is the average number of OPU, average number of embryos per OPU? Uh, about in the lorry, about 10 embryos. That is okay. the average of oocytes is about 40. The average of embryos is 10, 12. For a gear, for an example, a little less, about six, seven embryos. For host and about two embryos. If you use high fares in host and way in host and programs, about three, five, four embryos. It depends on the breed, it depends on the farm, it depends on the choice. For an example, in these farms that we do the programs, if you have many cows who that can be used as donors, we just choose the ones with more follicles. So this average go up a lot. If you don't have these, you, you have to use all the calls. And so it's, it's yes. uh, there is a, a, a different situation for each program. What is the ideal temperature of, for thawing embryos? The idea, temperature? Temperature, temperature for thawing for... of the embryos, thawing, thawing. thawing. I mean, you know, you frozen embryos, you, you thaw them, T-H-A-W, thawing. Before transfer, no frozen embryos. Ah, to unfrozen. Ah, unfrozen, yeah. Okay, unfrozen. What ah, we call ah, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, you have different protocols for each lab. Some labs yeah. you have to, to do some baths in the embryos at 37 degrees. Some baths you some labs you have to do the baths on the, the on the ambient degrees. It depends on the technician of every lab. There is a, you know, when you are doing embryo transfer, uh, you normally see they, some of the embryos which they develop little later, not on the scheduled date of seventh day, and you find them even eight day morning, some embryos are developing it, which uh, normally, do you use them? I mean, do you still get pregnancies out of them? That is a question. Uh, but in low, low rates, uh, you have to, do, to be conscious that you are do, that what you're doing. Uh, I, I want, I, I, I really need to transfer these embryos. The, the pregnancy rates will be really small, but if you want to try, but uh, the, the thing is, if you don't have much experience to do this, uh, probably you, you would, how can I say? There are so many variables. You have, you have to know with each one that you can control. Ah, I'll just transfer good embryos and the pregnancy and the receptor really good and the pregnancy is down, it is low. The problem is with the transfer, for, for an example. So you, you have to, 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 to know and consider every, every variable. Uh, you have too much receipts and you have less embryos, you have to transfer these unfrozen embryos with bad quality. Uh, you know that your pregnancy rates will not be good, but if you wanna transfer, Go on. Dr. Rodolfo, on behalf of its, I mean, you have given us a clear cut two hours as you are a very busy person, as I know, I've been interacting with you for the last uh, few weeks, but on behalf of all the members of the Bovine Embryo Transfer Group of India, I express my sincere thanks to you for the excellent talk covering various practical aspects of IVF in bovine and uh, uh, we wish you all the best for your future because I think you should be doing in, in a very big, big number of embryo transfer. But I also uh, thank you very much. I also ex express my thanks to Professor Madan for joining us and be with us continuously for the last two hours. So we appreciate, sir. And we always need your blessings uh, and we will be very uh, we are really grateful to you, sir. Last but not least, I am also thankful to all the members of the Wine Embryo Transfer Group and the other participants who have joined from all over the world uh, through the Facebook. And once again, uh, uh, Dr. Rodolfo, a million thanks to you for this wonderful uh, talk, uh, trying to give us a lot of practical hints. And uh, once again, with this, I conclude this webinar and wish you all the uh, good day in, uh, in front of you. Thank you very much. 
and I declare this uh, webinar closed. Thanks a lot. Thank you.